Hi, I'm Mike, and now I'm going to tell you how I became a real spy for soccer. It all started when a new chemistry teacher came to our school. Mrs. Brooke didn't explain much, she just loaded us with independent work, and sat glued to her phone. As a result, we failed one test after another. But Mrs. Brooke didn't mind that much, at least that's what I thought. But one day, I came home from soccer practice and saw her in our living room. The teacher was walking to my parents. As soon as she left, mom attacked me. You've started doing bad at school again because of your stupid football. Soccer has nothing to do with it at all. My trainings are after school. I'm sick of this, Mike. Finally, start studying. You need more time home. You were under house arrest for a month. I tried to explain everything to my mom, but she wouldn't even listen to me. It was terribly unfair. Mrs. Brooke didn't teach us anything and at the same time demanded some results and even complained to my parents. Because of her, I couldn't kick the ball after school anymore, and this meant only one thing. Now, I will definitely not get into the city soccer club, which I had long dreamed of. The next day, I came to school angry as never before. My classmates were in no better mood. It turned out that Mrs. Brooke had also visited their parents. My friend Theo suggested that everyone finally give up on chemistry, because it definitely wouldn't get any worse. Everyone was already seriously punished. We supported his idea and skipped the class together. And Theo was right. We didn't get anything for it. The next day, we gathered in the school cafeteria and discussed how we killed the time instead of class. But suddenly, Mrs. Brooke appeared. Everyone was quiet. And she, as if nothing had happened, took the tray and began to choose dishes. And then something unexpected happened. A courier came into the cafeteria with a huge buffet of roses and went to Mrs. Brooke. She grabbed the flowers, sniffed them, and took out a note. It was the first time I saw her smile. The guys opened their mouths and the girls began to whisper. And only Theo, for some reason, was still sitting, dissatisfied. Why have you gotten a lather, dude? Forget it, it's none of our business anyway. But neither Theo nor the classmates thought so. The next day, the private life of our chemist became the number one topic at school. Everyone seemed to have gone crazy and whispered about it on every corner, but I wasn't interested at all. My parents found out about my recent absenteeism and extended my house arrest for another month. So I decided not to take any more risks and stayed for the last chemistry class that day. I thought I'd be sitting in a half-empty classroom, but when I entered, I saw all my classmates. Mrs. Brooke was suspiciously happy. Everyone kept an eye on her throughout the lesson, but nothing interesting happened. After the call, disappointed classmates began to get ready to go home. The teacher too. She opened a drawer in her desk, took out a small gift box, blushed, and left the classroom. And there was a kickback. One by one, versions began to pour out who this secret admirer of Mrs. Brooke was. But suddenly, Theo shouted the loudest, Shut up! There was silence in the classroom, and everyone stared at my friend. I proposed a bet. I will give the ball with Ronaldo's autograph to anyone who finds a fan of the chemist and shows proof. You got three days. I raised my hand automatically. Ronaldo has always been my idol, and for the sake of his autograph, I was ready to follow even the president to say nothing of the teacher. My friend Gwen dreamed of becoming an investigator and asked to be my assistant. But as soon as we left school, I regretted making a deal with her. Gwen chatted incessantly, offered some crazy ideas. I was wondering how to get rid of her, but then I saw Mrs. Brooke. She was getting in the car with our physicist. I decided to follow them. I grabbed Gwen by the hand and dragged her to the parking lot. The taxi was waiting for one of the students, but I persuaded the driver to take us for a double fee. We followed the teachers, and when their car stopped near some building, we jumped out of the taxi and hid in the nearest bushes. The physicist gave Mrs. Brooke his hand and handed her the gift bags with a smile. Ha! Huh, I didn't think they would blow their cover so quickly. The autograph was almost in my bag. I turned on the camera and held my breath, but it didn't happen at all what I expected. Children ran out of the building and rushed to hug our teachers. Mrs. Brooke and Mr. Stewart gave them the packages, and the joyful children began to pull out dolls, robots, constructors, and other toys. I zoomed the camera closer and read the sign near the entrance. It was an orphanage. The mission failed. Gwen and I decided to continue the investigation tomorrow and went home. But it was not so easy to find a new suspect. The next day, we didn't notice anything unusual about Mrs. Brooke, and we had nothing to please Theo with. 
After school, I was about to go home, but then Gwen ran up to me. She was in tears. Mike, help me! I somehow had gum in my hair! Gwen dragged me to the ladies' room. It was kind of creepy for me to go in there, even after class. So I brought her to the men's, wetted the comb, and began to work on her hair. Gwen was sobbing so loudly, but I heard a voice from the stall and clamped her mouth shut. It was Theo. He was on the phone. Yes, Mrs. Brooke. It's alright. I'm on my way. I wonder what they agreed on. Or maybe Theo himself gave the teachers these gifts and stirred up this dispute just to attract attention to himself. Gwen and I jumped out of the toilet and hid around the corner. Theo went into Mrs. Brooks' office and closed the door. A few seconds later, I burst in there, hoping to see something unusual. But Mrs. Brooke was just sitting writing formulas on the blackboard and explaining something to Theo. They both stared at me in surprise. I, er, I lost my earpiece here. I pretended to actually pick it up from the floor and waited for Theo outside of the office. Gwen had already gone somewhere. As soon as my friend came out, I demanded an explanation. Why have you come down on me? I'm just planning to go to medical school and ask Mrs. Brooke to explain a difficult topic to me. I screwed up again. There was less and less time to find the boyfriend, as well as the chances to get the ball. The next day, I decided to discuss strategy with my partner. But half a day passed, and she didn't show up. Gwen didn't respond to messages either. After the lesson, I went out into the hall to comfortably dial her. But then I heard the voices of Mrs. Brooke and Mr. Stewart. They were talking about Gwen around the corner. Mr. Stewart, don't scold her for skipping today. The girl really has a good reason. Hmm, why would Mrs. Brooke protect Gwen? Until the end of the lessons, I was tormented by suspicions. But when I left school, everything became even more suspicious. I saw my friend in the parking lot. She was standing by Mrs. Brooke's car with a pink box in her hands. I froze not too far from her and began to watch. When the teacher came over, Gwen gave her the box and hugged her. I clenched my fist in anger. What a sly girl. All this time, she was showering Mrs. Brooks with gifts for the sake of indulgences and specifically asked to be my partner in order to divert suspicion from herself. I turned on the camera. Well, I wonder how Gwen decided to fawn this time. Mrs. Brooke took out of the box a kitten with a bandaged paw, patted Gwen on the shoulder and left. I immediately approached my classmate. Where have you been all day? And where did this kitten come from? Oh, Mike. It's such a poor thing. In the morning, I saw it near the school. It had a big wound on its paw, and it was mewing so pitifully. It was terribly late, but I just couldn't leave it. So I called Mrs. Brooke and explained everything to her. She allowed me to skip chemistry and begged me off from other lessons. I took the kitten to the vet clinic, and when they helped him, I gave it to Mrs. Brooke. It turned out that her home is a kind of pet kettle, and then she finds a new home for them. She's so nice. You know, I won't spy on her anymore, since now you're alone. That's what I thought! Girls are so easily moved. Although, to be honest, I was pleasantly surprised. Mrs. Brooke wasn't the dragon I thought she was just two years ago, but I wasn't going to wimp out like Gwen anyway. After all, I had something to try for. On the way home, I stopped at the supermarket for a Coke, and in the queue in front of me, I saw Mrs. Brooke. She was buying kitten food and some kind of card with a heart. I didn't think much of it. But the next morning, the exact same postcard fell out of Mrs. Brooke's textbook when she was explaining a new topic. The teacher blushed, picked up the letter, and hid it in her desk. I guessed everything right away. And after the lesson, I shared my version with Theo. Dude, you're gonna be hit like a ton of bricks. I know who gives Mrs. Brooke all these cards. Come on, man, spit it out. Guess what? It's her. But I don't have any proof. Theo had such a face that I already said goodbye to the ball in my thoughts. But suddenly he said, I'll believe you if I see it with my own eyes. I need to make sure 100% that she doesn't have anyone. It's just that Mrs. Brooks is my football coach's wife. He's like a father to me, and I don't want him to be deceived. I definitely did not expect such a twist. So that's why Theo started this bet and even decided to sacrifice a valuable autograph. I offered him the easiest way to check my version, to follow the teacher after school. So we did. She turned into a toy store and came out with a teddy bear in her arms. I turned to Theo with a smug smile, but he was no longer there. He caught up with Mrs. Brooks. We know everything. Why are you cheating the whole school and buying gifts for yourself? I imagined how Theo would get a good dressing down for such audacity and hurried to his aid. But Mrs. Brooks didn't look angry at all. She looked confused. I felt sorry for her. Barely holding back tears, she told how it started. 
Recently, my husband and I have often quarreled over all sorts of trifles. Then, I was teaching at an evening school and decided to change jobs to be at home more often. That's how I got to you. But things only got worse. I was very worried and couldn't teach lessons properly. Of course, this has affected your knowledge. When the whole class failed the tests, the director called me to his office and threatened to fire me. I didn't know how to fix the situation. The only thing I could do was go to your parents to force you to study with their help. But after that, you didn't come to class at all. Then I figured out how to attract both your attention and my husband. I started buying gifts for myself, and it worked. You started attending chemistry class to figure out my admirer. I knew you, Theo, were on my husband's team, and I kept waiting for you to finally dare to tell him everything. It would make him jealous and maybe shake up our relationship. Theo and I exchanged glances. The teacher's unexpected confession confused the both of us. Theo was first to recover. Thank you for telling the truth. I'm sure things will get better between you and Mr. Brooks soon. After Mrs. Brooke left, Theo and I discussed the story for a long time. I told my friend about everything I had seen during these days, how the teacher delighted the children, and how she took a sick homeless kitten to her. We decided to reconcile with her husband and turn to Gwen for help. She suggested the easiest and fastest way, to tell the coach what troubles his wife had went to in order to mend a relationship with him. It turned out that Mrs. Brooke did not even suspect that everything was so bad, and our news upset him very much. But we offered to fix everything, and he did exactly what we advised. The next day, Mrs. Brooks' team had an important match, and he invited his wife there. Theo went out onto the field, and Gwen, Mrs. Brooke, and I sat in the bleachers. The game turned out to be terribly nervous, and when Theo scored the winning goal, we jumped out of our seats and screamed with all our might. But then a voice came over the speakerphone, drowning out all the fans. It was Mr. Brooke. He dedicated this victory to our teacher and invited her on a honeymoon, which they did not have many years ago. Mrs. Brooke burst into tears with happiness, and our sensitive Gwen along with her. Soon, Brooke's family flew on vacation, and after that, the teacher returned a completely different person. She began to conduct interesting lessons and even pursued the director to let us retake all the tests. She still received gifts, only now they were from her husband. But do you know what the coolest thing about this story is? Mrs. Brooke asked the coach to see what I could do on the field. He was satisfied and took me to the soccer club. Now Theo and I are playing on the same team. He gave me an autographed ball, and now I show off in front of all the guests. That's how, thanks to espionage, I became a soccer player. Did you have to follow someone? Tell me in the comments.